sci-fi and fantasy short stories. Mechanistry 5, Ninth Times the Charm, written and performed by Chris Heron. The terrifying sound of something large being hauled across the tile floors reverberated into the cramped waiting room, causing several students to leap from their seats. They watched the door with wary eyes, when, sure enough, it burst open a moment later and a rail-thin man stepped inside, dragging a large wooden crate behind him. Nolt ran the back of his hand across his forehead as he continued to struggle with his box. He managed to pull the thing to the closest chair, chasing away the younger student who was occupying it with a wave of his hand and a low growl. Wheezing, he plopped down into it and sucked in a deep breath. He had a good feeling about today. This time, for sure. They say, third time's the charm so his ninth attempt would be a guaranteed success. Three compounded three times equaled luck cubed, or eighteen times the luck. Nalt let out an unsteady, manic giggle that quickly turned into a sob. He had reassured himself last year with similar mathematical platitudes, and yet the senior mechanists had rejected his end-of-year project, again, denying him his graduation again. But this year was going to be different. This year, he had... Note, are you okay? With the speed of a cracked whip, Nolt's head snapped round to look woozily and possibly a touch possessed, up at one of the third years. Dalton, he thought. Marion. <sighs> he frowned and shook the names from his head. Excellent. Uh, Why do you ask, Byron? That was the right one. Uh, it's, uh, it's Trevor, the boy corrected him before pointing towards the floor. Well, for one, you're missing a shoe. And two, you look like you haven't slept in a week. Brushing off the youth's concern, Nolt laughed a high, screeching laugh. <laughs> Preposterous! It had been two weeks. I'm tickety-boo! <laughs> Thanks for asking. Trevor scratched at the back of his head, one eyebrow lifting in worry. His mouth formed a line when he looked in at all the doodads in the crate. Is that all yours? It's my foolproof master plan to graduate. Nolt wiggled a skinny finger at the boy before wrapping a knuckle against the wooden box. Every year they tell me that my inventions are... Too reactionary, or too safe, or too practical. Oh, you mean like that anti-drowning device that was just a boat strapped to your back? The auto-boat backpack was a legitimate idea! Nolt sucked in a deep breath through his nose, forcing himself to calm. I just hadn't refined it yet. But, as they say... If you can't beat them, join them. So this year, I have prepared a total of 47 new devices, each one more impractical than the last. Several of them, even I don't know what they do. <laughs> it's genius! Trevor, having only come over out of good manners, stood horrified and transfixed on the spot as he watched the clearly sleep-deprived man thrust a hand into his box of mystery devices. Nolt withdrew a length of pale pink fabric that immediately began to pop and sizzle. This one here is a blanket that when exposed to oxygen begins to heat up via chemical reaction. Oh, uh, isn't that... Don't interrupt! Nolt dropped the rag back into the box and dived in, fingers fumbling around for another contraption. Aha! This one is a toothbrush that removes plaque by utilizing miniature thermobaric explosions. With barely a care, he dropped it back in and pointed to a large red object, roughly the size and shape of a bread box strapped to a roller skate. That there is a rocket-propelled robot that walks your dog at record speeds. And there, a rocking chair for cats that does loop-de-loops. 
a self-adhesive clothing. The terror in Trevor's eyes only grew as he watched one deadly thingamajig after another emerge, until something plain and harmless-looking caught his attention. Oh, what's that? It was a small metal box with one blinking red light on a pull-out panel. Nolte retrieved the gizmo with a perplexed look. I, uh, uh, forgot about this one. It shouldn't be in here. It's a device to detect ghosts, uh, but it's useless. Obviously, the third year laughed. Ghosts aren't real. Oh, uh, they're very real. Nolte turned the box over in his hands. But this only works on space ghosts, and they don't make ladders tall enough for it to function. Ah, well, I suppose forty-six devices will be enough. He glanced around the cramped waiting room, past all the shocked and confused faces, to see a rubbish bin in the far corner. He climbed to his feet and began to make his way towards it. About seven steps away, he heard a loud woof, and, for a tense moment, the room glowed brightly before returning to normal. Turning slowly, Nolt could only stare in horror at the spot his crate had been. Now there was only a charred pile of ash on the stone floor. Trevor, now covered in soot, grimaced as he looked up with wide eyes. The blanket just ignited, and I'm pretty sure it set off the toothbrush. Nolte couldn't be totally sure, maybe 90%, but he was fairly certain something had snapped inside his head. There was a sound like a rubber band breaking after being pulled too taut, and his left foot began tapping uncontrollably. I, 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 I... The only other door in the room, the one that led to the panel of senior mechanists, burst open. The students collectively jumped, one launching his own project into the ceiling as Master Stokes stepped out. He was an impressive amount of man, enough to make grizzlies look malnourished, with a beard so magnanimous that it put juniper bushes to shame. All right, who's next? Stokes scanned around to see a familiar frame standing in the middle of the room. Ah, Mr. Nobbs. Always a pleasure to see your enthusiasm. He stepped forward to clap a hand on the man's shoulder, knocking him sideways. Ninth time's the charm, eh? <laughs> what have you got there? Nolte barely registered the man's words as he looked down at the shameful device in his hands. He let out a shallow sigh and passed it over, his heart sinking as he did. It, ah... Uh... Detects ghosts. He wilted under the curious look on his mentor's face. In the tiniest voice, he added, In space. Beneath the fat fingers that stroked at his mustache, Stokes repeated the word, Hmm, over and over, as he spun the box in his other hand. After a moment, he turned his gaze back on his pupil. This... Mr. Nolt is exemplary. Sure that the rubber band that snapped in his head earlier had left a ringing in his brain, Nolt dug a finger into one of his ears and swiveled it around several times. Y you... you got my name right, sir. And then the words hit him. Wait, exemplary, as in good... Stokes let out a booming laugh at the sight of those eyebrows disappearing into the boy's crazed hairline. <laughs> Better than good. This is absolutely stunning. Perhaps the greatest piece of machinery ever invented. In fact... He waved a fat hand back into the room behind him, beckoning the other teachers to join him. I propose that we elevate you directly to the rank of senior mechanist, effective immediately. Hear, hear! Willicky, the weasened old master in the wheelchair, pounded a fist in agreement. Nault took a step back, his head spinning. I, I, I don't know what to say. Let's hear it for Nault! 
Master Stokes threw his arms wide, inviting the others in the room to join in. The doors burst open, and more students began to pour in, all of them chanting his name. And before he knew it, Nolt was hoisted into the air by the pressing mob, and they began to march for the door. He giggled, swallowed up by the excitement, and began chanting alongside them, Nolt! 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 With a curious expression on his face, Stokes watched the medical team haul the gibbering Mr. Knobs out the door, strapped tight to a gurney held between them. He leaned in towards one of the on-campus medical staff that still remained, a deep frown carved on his face. Why is he chanting his own name? The man, dressed in a white frock coat, just shook his head sadly. No idea. Each one cracks in their own way. The imposing teacher sighed, waving the next student forward. Another one for the loony bin. Kids these days have no mental fortitude. Hey guys, thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed the story. Roughly every year on the anniversary of the channel, I try to put out another episode of Mechanistry, a continuation of my first ever story. It's kind of a way for me to easily see how far I've progressed as a narrator, and just a little something to celebrate the occasion. Tall Tale TV is now officially six years old. The channel has come so far, it's honestly unbelievable to me. And if things go the way that I'm hoping, this year should show some extreme changes to Tall Tale TV. Those of you listening to the podcast version may have noticed that there's now some ads at the end of the episodes. And while I have tried not to put anything on there for the longest time, it's gotten to the point where if I want Tall Tale TV to grow, I need to start generating an income. Thus far, I've been paying authors out of my pocket, and for a little while I was getting some YouTube AdSense, but they took that away. <laughs> so I'm hoping that by doing this, I can start generating enough income to really start driving interest towards the channel, and by doing so, bring you some amazing stories. And for everyone who's been with me so far, it means the world to me and Leslie. Thank you so much for supporting us. This hasn't been easy, but it has definitely been fun. And I can't wait to see where it takes us next. For any of you interested in hearing the older versions of Mechanistry, I will leave a link in the description, or if you're on YouTube, a little card here in the corner, and you should be able to watch all of them in a playlist. Be warned, my very first episode was definitely my first ever attempt at narration. <laughs> it's a little cringy at this point, but it's still fun to listen to. But before you go, if you enjoyed this, be sure to leave a thumbs up and a comment on YouTube. Or if you're listening to the podcast, just be sure to subscribe for more brand new short stories. I'm Chris Heron, and that's it for today's Tall Tale TV.